barbershop conversation guys feel free hit the subscribe button so i just want to talk about my reaction throughout the day uh started off early you guys know i got here pretty early uh nine o'clock i didn't really get any interviews but i got us a discount for the uh for the breakfast again it will be um uh december 1st 8 30 in the morning at the rich carlton at downtown la at the restaurant called glance it's down it's downstairs in the foyer area in the uh in the hall in the in the downstairs main main area you, you can't miss it all right glance okay i'll do another video explaining that we got a 20 percent discount off the 35 dollars which is pretty awesome so uh so 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 that's what the cost is so just do the math in your head now let's just fast forward to the shit that everyone's talking about let me explain something to you guys i i just really 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 want to drive home really really want this is not a black thing this is not a white thing this is a man with conviction i'm wise enough and smart enough not to get in the way of a man with conviction and and, and i'm talking about the non tyson fury fans if you're a tyson fury fan you're a tyson fury fan right if uh my like the old saying there's a saying if the man is going in the right direction get out the way you understand and 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 i'm looking at deontay wilder i'm about 15 feet away from on the ds i'm like in the fifth row somewhere in there fourth or fifth row and i'm looking at him and i'm like dude i i would assume this is how kobe looks going into game seven you know what i mean i would i don't know for sure or michael jordan he never went to a game seven so don't, I, I know that <laughs> a game six you understand I, it's just something about killers there's something about a killer and when you know a killer when, when you've had the fortunate opportunity of seeing the killer in re, whether whether it be in real life where you're really shooting people in real life or whether it's in sports you know a killer when you see one Isaiah Thomas killer you understand what I'm saying and the, that look that I saw in Deontay Wilder's eyes affirms in me that nothing short of greatness he will obtain and and then some of you some people gonna say how about if he loses that won't derail him he's still gonna be great <laughs> you know what I'm saying so I, I genuinely believe without a shadow of a doubt you are looking and you will are you are watching greatness and and uh, and sometimes you just got to get out of the way and let it happen go watch that interview i did with uh uh frank warren i thought it was pretty cool i thought it was pretty dope uh i thought it was pretty dope because in the middle of the interview he spiritually took off his coat and sat down and have a con and had a conversation with me it, it you, you'll feel it in the interview you'll feel it around about the six seven minute mark you'll feel him just relax and say all right he's cool we'll have a conversation and um and i, I brought up the point that we're looking at two great fighters. They do it in their own way, right? Tyson Fury is great. He's cool. He's casual. He's calm. He's an instigator. That's who he is. He's a pure boxer. You know what I mean? He's an agitator slash boxer in the ring. Deontay Wilder is a killer. He's an athletic killer. You understand what I'm saying? And um, he agreed with me. You understand? And, and, and I genuinely believe. Deontay Wilder, he used the word anointed, he used the word connected with his ancestors, you can believe, you can use the word focus, whatever adjective or noun or verb, pronoun, superlative, whatever word you want to use to describe focus and on the verge of greatness, that's what it is. And this fight today became must-see TV for me. Like, I mean, must-see TV. If I wasn't covering the fight and I saw this, I would have bought the fight today. You know, Tyson Fury's doing his job. You can say he's agitating him. That's fine. You can say whatever you want to say. He, you can say he's agitating him. He's pushing him where he's never been before. All the above can be true. But when I see, not but, and when I look at Deontay Wilder from where I come from and, and, and the amount of success that I've obtained in this real world that we call life, I look at him and, and there's a sense of joy. 
there's a sense of satisfaction. I have so much joy when a man can be black at the highest level. That's why I love LeBron James. You know what I mean? He, he don't do it with the outward courageousness of a uh, uh, Deontay Wilder. But he told that bitch, shut up and dribble? Okay. You know, you know what I'm about to do? I'm about to patent that and make millions of dollars on it. And then I'm going to sell it to another white man and he going to pay me. I think that's genius. You understand? 48 Laws of Power, man, is just so powerful. Some people don't even, haven't even read the book and, and, and realize that they're utilizing those tools. But great man, it's, it's just so powerful, as I was saying, when Deontay Wilder can be a black man in, in his highest form on the highest level. Y'all saw what happened with him and Radio Raheem. Y'all saw what he did with Tyson Fury. That shit is real, man. Like, you understand? Um... You know, use your discretion on how you feel as it relates to those. But just the words that come out of his mouth. It's conviction. Oh, man. 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 Whew. You know, there are few men on this earth that are willing to die for what they believe in. I believe Deontay Wilder is one of them. You know? Uh, that's why I can say I love Deontay Wilder without really knowing the man. You understand? I don't know him personally. I've never hung out with him. Well, I've been to a party with him before, but I've never truly, truly hung out with him. Like I would say, like my best of friends and stuff like that. But his spirit, I feel like I've known him 20 years. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I admire that about him. I admire, you, you know what I mean? I'm. Y'all already know where I stand on this shit. I'm outwardly a black man. And I, I, I attempt to be that in every aspect of my life. Do I fail sometimes? Obviously, social programming probably gets the best of me subconsciously sometimes, but when I'm conscious, when I'm in tune with everything that I'm doing, I'm gonna be a black man, you know, but you know, sometimes I gotta, you know, wave at a white woman and make her feel comfortable and shit like that. And I, and I get mad at myself sometimes for doing that shit. You know what I mean? I don't shake white man's hands, not unless I personally know him. You know what I mean? I, I give every white man knuckles, like for real, for real. and. And I'm, and you know, it's just, I'm, I'm just real proud, you know, I'm not, I'm just real proud that he can be that, you know, and um, so I just wanted to come on and just give you guys a feel of what I saw and how I saw it. Deontay Wilder is ready. I was sitting next to Tyron. Tyron's actually covering the fight, and uh, you guys know him from all my videos. And I was like, this motherfucker is ready, like. He's locked in. I, I think that's what I said. He's totally locked in. When he sat down, he was just totally locked in. As he said, he's he's transforming from Deontay Wilder to the Bronze Bomber. Damn. Fuck. Man. Anyways, man. Uh, barbershop conversation. We at it again tomorrow, 11 a.m. We have the uh, undercard. We have the undercard presser. That should be exciting because it's a, it's a bunch of people that I've never interviewed before. So that'll be pretty awesome. Um, I'm always excited to interview new people because, you know, you have this preconceived notion of who they are. And then when you meet them and they talk and you're like, oh, you're either that person or greater. You know what I mean? <laughs> so but anyways, man, I just want to I, I just wanted y'all to feel like my energy as it relates to that. If uh, if you love boxing, some people can't afford the pay-per-view. I understand all of that. I, I, I come from a very very compromised background here's what i need you to do i need you to sacrifice your fucking hamburger friday night i need you to tell your boy to sacrifice his burger friday night i need you guys to sacrifice your long island iced tea um uh, you know all my all my niggas like brown all right don't go buy that bottle all right y'all put your monies together 64 74 dollars do it one time do it one time all right and support Deontay Wilder. It's not, and 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 I know some people are gonna say, well, a portion of it goes to other people. We know that. We, I, 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 I understand that. But you watching Deontay Wilder knock Tyson Fury out will inspire you to do something. Uh, I don't know what you desire to become, what your purpose is, but but I think when a black man sees another black man accomplishing great feats. It inspires you spiritually more so than a white man more so than a Mexican man I genuinely believe it does that so I so so this this is gonna be a $74 source of inspiration for you five six of you guys put ten dollars in the pot 
do not miss this okay please do not miss this okay um, hold yourself accountable one time all right a combo at Big Mac is nine dollars now seven dollars somewhere in there you know one sacrifice all right for Deontay Wilder show this man some love man he came from Alabama he came from the Delta he came from the bottom and now he has potential to be the, on the top of America as it relates to boxing I think it's special you know the same way I stood out and I froze for President Obama's inauguration it's special it's special the same way I silently stand up and applaud Al Heyman for what he's doing in boxing it's special the same way I talk to Malcolm X every morning every day wherever I have spare time in my day what he did is special and there's not whether it's with a basketball like LeBron James or whether it's with gloves like like uh, Deontay Wilder or whether it's with your spirit and your your ability to fight like a Malcolm Max or you get what I'm saying or you know what I mean or whether you can pick up a tennis racket like Arthur Ashe you know what I mean or you guys know where I'm going with that it's just special when because you know as a black man I can only speak from a black man's perspective all right you know what it's like to be down and out in this country you hundred percent know all right there's no um, there's no you cannot deny it you've seen your cousin go to jail you know you just put money on your cousin's book your brother's book your auntie's book your uncle's book your dad's book you just you just gave him thirty dollars last week last month you know what I mean it's it's unique it's special and one day one day wherever you are in your afterlife all right you going to smile one day because in about 500 years or about 300 years, I don't know when that's going to time, it's going to flip flop. And you're going to be proud to say that you had a part. You played a huge part in that, whether it was a Deontay Wilder's pay-per-view or whether it was you grabbing your fucking son or daughter by, the, by two hands on each shoulder and telling them, you're not going to settle for mediocrity. You will be great, period. I don't know what it is, but you're going to be proud one day that you was a part of it. And I think sports plays a part in that. You know, I genuinely believe sports plays a part in the growth and the acceleration of, of, of blacks in America. You know, like what we do with our fame, what we do with the money that we get is, is, is independent of the driving force. I mean, it all comes together because there's a butterfly effect and there's an energy, but I'm saying just looking at it from a 50,000 feet perspective it accelerates the notion and 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 I know the hindsight about that every time a black man scores a basket it puts dollars in a white man's hand I understand that every time a black man catches a touchdown from Tom Brady Kraft makes millions of dollars I understand all of that now we have to understand go go to the Chris Broussard interview he said why don't 25 other great black athletes who have access to funds, who have access to people in power to put schools together and, and empower us. You know, some people say integration was bad. Some people say integration was good. I'm not going to go into that in this interview because I want to keep us here. I just genuinely believe that we have the power, we have the strength, and I 100% believe all we, all we need is us. If we get other people, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. And that's the goal, is to get everyone else on board with our mission statement and not this uh, uh, compromised version of the Constitution that we live in in everyday America. So uh, I salute y'all. We got to buy the pay-per-view. We got to support Deontay Wilder. I know a portion of it goes to Tyson Fury and Time Warner and Showtime and but you know, no matter what the numbers do, it's a reflection of Deontay Wilder, you know, like on a bigger scale. So sacrifice your Friday night. That's all I'm asking you guys to do. One, I don't ask you guys for much. Sacrifice your Friday night and uh, we're going to win. All right. Deontay Wilder is going to knock this man out and you're going to be so happy you watched it. It's going to inspire you. It's going to encourage you. And, and him in that face off saying what he said 
to a white man. And granted, Tyson Fury doesn't have symptoms of being a racist. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about what came out of Deontay Wilder's mouth and the optics. Talking to a white man in the highest place you can be in boxing on a pay-per-view heavyweight championship fight on Showtime. HBO is dissolved. So, uh, I believe that to be powerful. So, anyways, man. Barbershop conversations, man. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Join my Patreon. Um, 8.30 in the morning, we're having a breakfast. Um, um, 8.30 in the morning, Ritz Carlton at, at the restaurant is called Glance. Buffet breakfast, we're getting 20% off, y'all. We're getting 20% off. That's a deal, and I love it. So, um, uh, have a great day. You know what this looks like? Looks like, uh, remember that Dr. Dre? <laughs> remember the Dr. Dre uh, album cover? When it's all black and it's just him? That's what this shit looks like. Barbershop conversations, man. Feel free to subscribe. But I, I'm, I'm excited to watch y'all videos, y'all response videos as to what happened today. Dan, you got Danny Garcia, all that shit. So anyways, man, I got to do some catching up. But here's the cool thing. I got invited to a uh, to the Green Door something like that the green not something like that the movie the green door i'm i'm ultra ultra excited ja javelle mcgee is having a screening for it so i'm really excited to watch that javelle mcgee J javelle mcgee <laughs> you guys know him he plays for the lakers so he's having a i'm on my way there now but uh i'm excited i'm definitely gonna give a review of that movie if you guys don't know what the green door is the green door is base not basically i'm not compromising this at all it's restaurants, houses that slaves and black people could go to during the time of oppression. That's what the Green Door was back then. So uh, feel free to watch the trailer. It's a powerful title. I was a history major in college. It's a powerful title if you understand where it came from. So anyways, man, I salute y'all. Let's support Deontay Wilder Saturday night. Uh, click that button today. If you have to wait till you get paid on Friday, I completely understand. Friday is the first. I get all that shit. All right. But take your girl. Have a pay-per-view and chill with your girl. $74. All right. And then invite another couple over. And the four of y'all can chill and y'all split it. $38 a piece. There you go. Someone bring the pizza. Someone brings the hot dog. Someone brings the Coke. Someone brings the brown. And we rocking and rolling. All right. Someone brings a lemonade, you need a mixer. Barbershop conversation. Feel free to hit the subscribe subscribe button. And make sure you buy some rock, because Diddy owns that. <laughs> have an all black night. Anyways, man, I salute y'all. Barbershop conversations, man. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.